Hi there, and welcome to the virtual campout. We're happy to have you. My name is Dawn Weaver. I'm the manager at Battle of Musgrove Mill State Historic Site outside of Clinton, South Carolina. We are one of 47 South Carolina state parks. Battle of Musgrove Mill protects, preserves, and interprets two American Revolutionary battlefields. Um, the Battle of Musgrove Mill and the Battle of Blackstock. That is one of the reasons that I've chosen this book this evening to read. It's a true story and it's really kind of cool. It's one of my favorites. Gingerbread for Liberty, How a German Baker Helped Win the American Revolution. The book is written by Mara Rockliffe and pictures are by Vincent Kirsch. Before I get started, I'm going to read a little bit from the author's notes. As she gives a little bit of background into the life of Christopher Ludwig. Gingerbread for Liberty is based on the life of Christopher Ludwig, a forgotten hero of the American Revolution. Ludwig was born in 1720 in Germany. His father was a baker and young Christopher helped in the bake shop from a very early age. At 17, he joined the Hessian army. He served many years as a soldier and a sailor before waking, making his way to America, where he set up shop in, in Philadelphia as a baker of gingerbread. Christopher Ludwig was a big man with a voice to match. When he walked down the street, everyone knew he was coming and they were always happy to see him. Everyone said he had the kindest heart in Philadelphia. Ludwig loved his new country. When the revolution came, he rushed to serve. Refusing payment, he built ovens and bought flour out of his pocket to bake bread for the hungry troops. He did such a good job that he was soon put in charge of baking for the entire Continental Army. After his successful midnight expedition to the British Army camp on Staten Island, Washington also put him in charge of Hessian prisoners of war. Ludwig treated them so well that many joined the American side. By the time that the revolution had won, Ludwig felt old and tired. He lost a lot of his sight and most of his life savings. He went home to discover that the British had ransacked his house and then the deadly yellow fever breakout that hit the city in 1798. While others fled, Ludwig rolled up his sleeves and set to work baking free bread, free bread to feed the sick and poor. He was always known for helping everyone in need, children especially, at a time when there were no public schools. He spent a lot of his money paying for free schooling for poor children. More than 200 years later, the Christopher Ludwig Foundation carries on his aims, giving about $200,000 each year to programs that help needy children in the city of Philadelphia. Most of what we know about his life came from a brief account written by his friend, Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was one of America's founding fathers and signer of the Declaration of Independence. We also know that he made really good gingerbread. So, I'm going to read Gingerbread for Liberty, How a German Baker Helped Win the American Revolution by Mara Rockliffe. Front page and the back pages have some really great recipes on them, so you can always try out some yourself. Everyone in Philadelphia knew the gingerbread baker. His honest face his booming laugh, and of course his gingerbread, the best in all of 13 colonies. His big flowery hands turned out castles and queens, horses and cows and hens, each detail drawn in sweet buttery icing with the greatest of skill and care. And yet despite his care, he always seemed to be some broken, there always seemed to be some broken pieces for the hungry children who followed their noses to the spicy smelling shop. No empty bellies here, the baker bellowed, not in my America. Once upon a time, he had been young and hungry too, and he had followed his own nose to the new world where a hardworking young man could open his own bakery and could always have enough to eat. But now something was in the air. Beside the smell of baking gingerbread, newspapers were shouting, revolution, independence, liberty, Boys rolled up their blankets, shouldered their guns, and kissed their mothers goodbye. The baker hung his apron up. He dusted the flour off his hands. Where are you going? Asked his wife. To fight for my America, he said. 
I was a soldier once. That was a long time ago. And far away, she said, you're a baker now, and you are old and fat. Baker knew his wife was right, but he also knew that he loved his country. Somehow, he had to find a way to help. He packed his bags, and he went to join General Washington. So it's not always easy to get the page turned. General Washington didn't say the baker was old and fat. General Washington was much too polite. Anyway, he had other troubles on his mind. The men are threatening to leave. They say the food is terrible and there isn't enough of it. The baker rolled up his sleeves. No empty bellies in my America, he told. General Washington, not in my America. But bigger trouble was on the way. Across the ocean, Your Majesty, those Americans think they can beat your redcoats. Ha ha ha. His Majesty says, Humph, wonder if they're right. Ha ha, ha. Huh? The King of England wrote to other rulers, and he hired their armies to help him squash the revolution. When the ships sailed into sight, even General Washington turned pale. Who had ever seen such an army? Not me. Not me. Definitely not, definitely not me. But down here was Christopher. I have, he said. These soldiers come from the land where I was born. The baker told General Washington, let me go speak to them. Perhaps I can persuade them that we are not their enemies. Perhaps I can even persuade them to switch sides. If you are caught, you will be killed, Washington warned. The baker smiled, then I must not be caught. In the darkest hour of the night, he rode across the bay. With each dip of his oars, he thought of words to win the soldiers over to the American cause. Revolution independence, liberty. But when he looked into their hungry faces, all his fine words slipped away. What could he say? I have a bake shop, he began. And the baker spoke. The soldiers seemed to see, see the fragrant steam rising from his ovens. They could almost smell the spicy gingerbread and taste the sweet buttery icing on their tongues. And you always have enough to eat, the soldiers asked. No empty bellies here, the baker told him. Not in my America. Across the ocean. Your Majesty, we just do not understand. Those hired armies seem to disappear. Many, many loaves and battles later, the British have surrendered. The revolution is over. We won. My work is done, the baker cried. Washington said, not quite. This is a gift from General Washington and his baker. Did he bake the British soldiers gingerbread for their dessert? We'll never know. They didn't leave a crumb. That's the end of the book, Gingerbread for Liberty. You have a great time this weekend at our virtual camp out. We look forward to seeing you back bright and early in the morning. We'll talk to you later. Bye.